Hey guys, I'm making this video to uh, show a work in progress of mine, uh, something I've been making in Nuke, which is a terrain generator. Um, it sort of works. Um, still a few things I may need to figure out. Uh, but basically what it does, um, I started off with this, which was originally meant to be an attempt at uh, you know, making an environment. And you can see this didn't work well, and actually I've screwed it up a lot more from what it was. but it's decent, I guess. Not, no, not really. <laughs> you couldn't really use this for anything. But anyway, um, I decided to go and try and actually make this 3D using the same sort of approach that I did, which is really doing nothing but uh, generating a color, doing some noise, um, and then I think I just quarter pinned it to lay it on the ground. But that's kind of lame. So I said to go full 3D with this one, and let me show you the final result first, and then I'll show you how I got there. All right. <laughs> so this is my terrain generator, and actually I think I messed up the color now somehow. But uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so you can see it's generating mountains and generating some foliage, and it's even faking ambient occlusion, which I just added and just now figured out how to do. Um, yeah, so how this is working, it's just a card, as you might have guessed. Um, and then almost everything is baked into the textures currently. Uh, but I'll just lead through from the beginning to the end. So we start off the same. We've got a solid color and then some noise patterns on top. Uh, like literally just straight noise. Nothing special here. Another layer of noise. And then I sharpened it to try and just bring out sort of sort of a gravelly texture because you really weren't seeing the, uh, the grain of the, the ground but some color correction um, and this color correction is actually based on height basically this is our base texture map but then I also have a noise over here that's driving the actual height of the uh, of the mountain it's just a single uh, noise node I could probably combine two or three of them to get pretty cool effects but, but uh, for now just working off of the one but anyway, we use that as a mask to do some color correction over the sky so that as the rock goes up higher, you can see the rock actually gets a little lighter, like it's been weathered a bit more. And then I do the same for the darks, make them get a little darker so that it's kind of, you know, maybe looking like soil or runoff stuff. Then I do a final color grade. Okay. And now the foliage. So the foliage is uh, based off of this, this height noise. And then I use a filter called Laplacian or Laplacian or however you say it. But basically what it does is it, you set a radius. And it uh, if, you've, if you've ever seen where you, you take noise and you can blur it, or you take anything, you blur it and then you subtract one from the other and it just sort of leaves you just the high frequency details. Um, that's kind of what, what Laplacian does, but it's... Uh, a little different. I think it's actually sort of the inverse of that. But uh, it, it was uh, something that worked out pretty well to get the valleys here, because basically if you look at the noise here, it's uh, I couldn't really find a way to control where the foliage was. I could do a straight height map, but then that would literally look like a height map. It would be just a straight, uh, it would almost look like a oh, sea level sort of deal, you know, straight cut across the whole land. Um, but I wanted it to go in all the valleys here, so I did this Laplacian filter, inverted it, then I did a color grade on it that uh, really, really brought out, uh, you know, made it mostly opaque in just the valleys. And then I did a multiply here uh, based off of this, which is the height map inverted, um, just so that you don't get much foliage the higher you go. Um, I could turn that off and let it still give me foliage up there and it'd be fine. Then another final grade, and then I'm using that as an alpha for this sort of base. Uh, oh, can I see this? There we go. Uh, this sort of base uh, foliage color thing that I did. And I did a similar uh, height-based color correction on this. So if I brighten this up, you can see what it's doing here. In fact, I kind of don't like this, this bottom one here that's making it look kind of ugly. Uh, contrast. Why is this so lame looking? Well, 
Anyway. Oh, offset. There you go. Not sure how that got bumped up. There we go. That's probably good. Anyway, that's uh, that's all that's really driving this thing. Uh, we just have the card in here with the texture on it, and that is getting displaced based on the height field. And there you go. That's your final thing. But it was seen with some lighting on it, and it starts to look kind of cool. And the cool thing about this is since it is noise, uh, you can really easily tweak aspects of this environment. Um, so say I want the mouse to be a lot smaller, I could do, say, 2048 for the size. And it'll take a little while to update, but you'll, you'll get a nice, nice result no matter what you type in, really. And things like the color and the texture of the train are pre pretty easy to adjust. In fact, you could even do uh, a little more advanced height-based um, coloring and actually get you know sort of lines going up at like sediment lines uh, like sandstone if you wanted uh, just based on the height but um, yeah this is my train generator and I think it's pretty cool So I'm going to try and make this into a gizmo of some sort or uh, something, I really don't know what would be the best way. I mean, because once you bump this thing up to a resolution that's actually renderable, it's uh, pretty laggy. And I mean, you, you can't really do cast shadows and things like that that you'd want for realistic looking terrain. But it's still, still pretty neat, I think. So, anywho, that is my terrain. Cool. Alright, ending video.